Jane was a healthy ballet dancer up till a sudden growth spurt at the age of 12. Her doctor found out that her spine was curving towards an S shape, which was a clear sign of scoliosis. This changed her life completely. She had to wear this chunky plastic corset called a brace for 23 hours every day until she stopped growing. Ever since, she was forced to quit ballet, started hating going to school, and eventually even gave up wearing her brace. Her scoliosis had then worsened, and as a consequence, she had to go through a tough spinal fusion surgery. Unfortunately for scoliosis patients, it's extremely hard to keep their brace on all day long. In fact, as much as a fourth of them fail to do so. In the UK, this is 11,000 children, and addressing this problem could save the NHS up to 80 million pounds per year in surgical costs. Here at FEOS, we're dedicated to give these kids a better bracing life by uh, redesigning it using 3D printed swappable modules. Doing so, we create value for patients in terms of comfort, ease of use, and most importantly, aesthetics. By treating the brace as more of a fashion accessory, um, we try to give our patients a drive to accept their treatment rather than constantly threatening them with the side effects of surgery. Built out of fully customizable parts that can snap together like Lego, we see patients like Jane regaining their confidence while wearing our braces around their friends. We're here to ask for 1.2 million pounds to establish feasibility and roll out our first prototype. As many of you here may be aware, getting teenagers to comply isn't a simple task, but it could all start with a simple design tweak. My name is Stephen Chen, and thanks for listening. Yeah, sure. Thanks for that. Um, I also actually have a question on the, your last comment with a simple yeah. design tweak. So yeah. I'm going to get into the intellectual property side of things. So I wonder if you, so just for me to understand, you have this new corset which you can redesign to make it more fashionable. So will you be starting from whatever, what, something that is already available and retweaking it? So we're basing our me mechanical design out of something yeah. that's already available, but then we're okay. splitting up the brace into different modules that can snap together so that that can um, induce additional um, benefits. And was, was there any studies or, or discussions on the intellectual property on that? What, how we can protect it in terms of design? Um, so because each brace is customly made um, mm -hmm. for each patient out of a 3D scan, um, I don't think that's, um, uh, that's protectable. Even if we protect it, I don't see um, how we're going to maintain um, our protection of it, um, okay. but we are planning to um, protect our uh, design flow uh, in the sense of how mm -hmm. to split the brace and how to design uh, the linkage features. Okay, interesting. And about manufacturing as well, so you mentioned that you need funding to do your first prototypes. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of the cost? So how, how expensive and how long it takes to actually do these prototypes, and if the cost can be lowered if you actually go into the market. Um, so, the at the moment, and the community server is lacking in communication and engagement. And I've been thinking about that quite a bit. Just wanted to reiterate this idea that, especially during these these times, it's really important to focus more and more now on community. So, in the community server, uh, I've posted a message. Uh, sorry, I think you're unmuted. <laughs> Oh, I got confused. I thought someone was uh, together. Yeah, yeah, that okay, was let me just, hold some on. other person. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so my question uh, was manufacturing you, and uh, the, yeah, yeah, okay. the cost, and if you're looking into the future, if that can lower the cost, yeah. Um, so basically, we're um, aiming to get an industrial scale um, 3D printer um, with the money that we're asking for, um, and we're uh, looking to put 500k, 500,000 
um, into that, um, into purchasing raw material and um, getting the design finalized. Um, and the rest of the money would be dedicated to hiring people who do it and also uh, running uh, feasible studies, uh, fe feasibility studies at, in hospitals. Thank you. Yeah, I think Michelle covered one of my, what would have been my question about IP, but I will. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Great minds. Um, so I'll go a couple of kind of scaling questions. So one is what do you think your sale price of a brace would be? Because obviously you can't do it on the savings to the NHS, there's got to be comparable products out there. So um, the current commercially available brace, uh, for instance, um, the London Orthotic, uh, London Orthotic, Com Orthotic Company has a similar brace, uh, a um, non-modular brace that's around 1,000 to 2,000 pounds in terms of cost. Uh, we're looking into matching that. Yeah. But in terms of manufacturing, because we're 3D printing it, um, it there's a lot less material waste and um, just a upfront cost of the uh, uh, 3D printer. And then how would you look to kind of scale out of, let's say, London to the UK mm -hmm. to the world? So obviously we can't 3D print every single brace that we sell. Um, in the long term, we will focus only on the design. And as uh, 3D printing becomes more and more popular, we would try to um, send our patients the actual files so that they could print their own braces at home. Okay. Thank you.